Okay, we're going to ramp it up and give you some harder problems to solve using elimination. But before we do that, I would like you to look at this system. Notice that my first equation, the x and the y term, are both on the same side of the equal sign. But on the second equation, the x term is on one side of the equal sign and the y term is on the other. In order to use elimination, both the x's and the y's must be in the same spot in each equation. The equations have to appear the same. So at first you're thinking, well, I can't use elimination, but actually I can easily rewrite the second equation. So I'm just going to move my first equation over, and then I'm going to move the 16y to the other side of the equal sign, and I have to do that using an inverse operation because I can't just move something willy-nilly across an equal sign. So this is going to give me negative 16y plus 3x equals negative 33. And when I do that, I can see that I have opposites. So all I have to do is add the two equations together to solve them. That gives me y equals 33, and then I take, or excuse me, not 33, 3, and then I take this y value, and I'm going to plug it into one of my original equations, and this particular one, I'm going to plug it in right where the second equation. So I'm going to say 3x equals 16 times 3 minus 33. And I'm going to solve that. And I get that x equals 5. So remember, you can always rewrite an equation so both of the equations are similar before you start with elimination. Alright, so what if we have an equation like this? Notice that none of the coefficients in this system are the same or opposite. Um, and remember, our goal is to create opposites to get rid of one of our variables. So if I have something like this, that's no problem. I can multiply one or both of the equations to create opposites. And then I'm going to use the same process, add the equations and solve for the other variable. So let's look at this. And what I'm going to do is look at my x terms first. And I'm going to say, hey, will one of these coefficients go evenly into the other. And yeah, 2 will go evenly into 6 three times. So I could multiply my bottom equation by negative 3. Now before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and move over my top equation. Remember, organization is huge in math. And then I'm going to multiply everything in the bottom equation by negative 3. So negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x, and as you can see, I have now created my opposite. Negative 3 times 3y is negative 9y, and negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Now that I have opposites, I know how to solve this equation by adding them together. And I get that y equals negative 1. Now I'm going to take that negative 1 and plug it back into one of my equations, my original equations. And it doesn't matter which one, so I think I'm just going to put it right there. And that is going to give me two x minus three equals five. And this is a two-step equation you know how to solve. And when I do, I get that x equals 4. So in this one, instead of multiplying by negative 1, I figured out that if I multiplied by negative 3, I could create an opposite. All right, let's try one more. What if I have something like this? Okay, again, I'm going to look at my x values, the coefficients, and I've got a 4 and a negative 3. Well, negative 3 won't go into 4. Now, they're opposites, but they're not uh, the same number. All right, so let's look at my y values. I have one's negative and one's positive, so they're opposites, but they're not the 
same number, and 3 will not go evenly into 8. So I've got to think a little bit harder about how I'm going to create an opposite. Well, I know that 3 and 4 will go evenly into the number 12. So if I multiply everything on the top by positive 3, I should get 12x minus 9y equals 75. And if I multiply everything on the bottom by positive 4, I'm going to get negative 12x plus 32y equals 40. Now, as you can see, I have created an opposite, 12x and negative 12x, which is exactly what I wanted. And now I have a system I know how to solve by adding them together. My uh, x terms are eliminated. I get 23y equals 115. And when I solve for y, I get that y equals 5. Now I'm going to go ahead and start my template put 5 there for y, and now I just have to figure out what x is. So I'm going to take this y value, and I'm going to put it up into, oh, let's just put it up there. And I'm going to get 4x minus 15 equals 25. This is a two-step equation I know how to solve. And when I do, I get x equals 10. So the solution to this system is x equals 10, y equals 5. All right, so again, let's just go back. I looked at my coefficients, and I had to create opposites. I did that by multiplying one equation by 3 and another equation by 4 to get 12x and negative 12x so that my x terms would be eliminated. All right, we went through that kind of fast, but I think you can get it. I would like you to try these two problems in your notebook as your independent practice. Please pause your video, work these problems, and then you can come back and check your work. Okay, I got the solution negative 7, negative 1 for my first independent practice. And you can check your work against mine. I multiplied my first equation by negative 2 to create a negative 10x, and my second equation by positive 5 to create a positive 10x. All right, now check your next solution. I got 2, negative 5 for the second independent practice. I created an opposites of the y's by multiplying the top equation by 4. And that gave me a negative 4y, and then I already had a positive 4y in the second equation. All right. I think you're ready for your teacher talk or working on your homework.